we're here today. My mom, this is, tell them your name. Mary Alice Fjord. Yep. And Eric Fjord. Eric Fjord. Yep. And this is my mom. She's 92 and three quarters, as we say. And starting back in the beginning of the year, she started with foot pain and became misdiagnosed by family doctors and even myself, I overlooked. Um, so as time went on in March and April, her foot pain progressed worse. There was some studies done, an x-ray. Um, and then finally we went to a, um, a major hospital in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where we had a push and it took us even three weeks to get the testing done and to get an appointment to get into a doctor. Um, and they came down with, she had, you know, multiple problems with peripheral artery disease in her, in her body. Um, with that being said, you know, they pushed to get a, a appointment, I did at least, um, and her foot was changing so rapidly, her second toe where she started out with on uh, May, third, I believe it was a little red spot on your toe. Remember you had just like a little red spot, but she always had so much pain between her toes even. And then by May 18th, which was 15 days later, she had a very significant ulcerated sore on the end of her second toe, which was progressing very rapidly. She had significant pain in the middle of the night. And then we had a push and we got into a hospital in the, in the Lehigh Valley area. Um, and I had a push even to get her in there. It took almost three weeks to get an operation done. And they were unsuccessful with opening up any of the arteries below her knee. They told me that it was actually in her lower, in her foot. Um, so we left there, we tried different that mechanisms of a, of a pumping device which they, they gave us um, and she was very uncomfortable with that. So with that, I emailed the hospital back to the doctor to find out if there was anything else that we could do. Um, their reply to me was for pain management, would it be a transmetatarsal amputation? And if that wasn't successful in the future, you would do a below the knee amputation so we left we yeah we uh we weren't real thrilled with that answer so went up at the middle of the night i was looking for um some type of resource or a procedure and my 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 searching found me to a, a procedure called retrograde tibial pedal access. And when I searched that on the internet, I could find hardly anything. I found maybe, I found some procedures on YouTube that, you know, explain the procedure and how it was done, but not anybody that did it. I was out of town. I was traveling back home and um, my phone rang and it was Jim Wilson from CSI. And he was the one that opened the door for me two different resources to tell me that, yes, it's not the tools, it's the skill set of the doctor. And he had mentioned some other doctors that were a little further away, and he gave me Kim's name, Kim McNichols from thewaytomyheart.org. Kim McNichols called me on the phone, and I was in a, just like one town away doing some work with my business. And such an amazing girl um, had me on the phone for at least an hour and a half and in that hour and a half time, came up with an answer of Dr. Runback and NJ Endovascular in, in West Orange, New Jersey. And in two and a half days, and I say that again, in two and a half days, from Monday night to Thursday morning, we had an appointment with Dr. Runback and we had a clinical opening in the afternoon where we would be the last patient of the day, but he would be able to, you know, possibly if he felt her, you know, suited to that, he could operate or he would. And it was literally mind spinning um, to go from one extreme of 
you know, even my friends that talked to me after I told them what I was doing, they, they told me, they said, Eric, the tone of your voice is the best I've heard it in a month, a month and a half, you know, because you're so dejected and it's just horrible to watch your parent, my mother sit there and her foot rotting away and nothing that I can do because in my line of work, I fix things and make things happen. Um, and so this was just a, a complete turnaround for us. And, and we were unknown even driving there when we got there and they started doing testing. I brought all of her medical records, um, but we got all that, brought all of Dr. Run back. He looked through it briefly. He said, we'll do our own test. They did a, a Doppler test on her leg and you know they realized where some issues were. And he looked at me, Dr. Run back when he came in and met him and he said, he said, I can, I can help your mom. We put her fate in God's hands and Dr. Runback's hands. And literally I went outside and we sat and prayed in the car and we, we waited and when they called us and, you know, we walked back inside and then he looked at me and he said, yeah, he said, I found some blockages below her knee. He said, I got through them and she's got a lot of good blood flow to her foot now. She's going to be fine. And I remember my mom was sitting there and she was crying. And I was crying. I mean, it just, it was a very magic moment, I should say. So when Dr. Runback, when I saw him, you know, and he told me, you know, what he had done, you know, we were very happy and my mom was crying. And I, you know, I looked at him and I, I gave him a hug. I mean, COVID kind of went out the window. He didn't have a mask on and I, I just couldn't thank him enough. And I remember nurse Diane came over to me and she looked at me and she said to me, Eric, she goes, not only did doctor run back, you know, find the blockages in her below her leg. And I believe they used a new laser system, which was the angiodynamics aneuron system. Um, I found out later. She, Diane, said to me, she said, not only did she unblock there, he said he went out and went the extra mile for your mom and made sure that the pedal loop was open down in her foot with an angioplasty, I believe. And she said he really, he really did good today. I know they were in there for two hours plus. And I feel sad for the, the patients and the people I see in the waiting room when I was with her in stockings, in sandals, in open-toed shoes. And the day after we came back, which was last Wednesday, I believe it was the, mm -hmm. I don't know what the date was right now. I'm so confused. Wednesday. Last Wednesday, we saw a Dr. Runback and they took a picture and Dr. Runback and Diane and everybody was so pleased. It was a great picture of all four of us. The next day we came home, the scab on her second toe fell off. And if you would see all of her toes, the pictures from before and four weeks and five days later, the turnaround of her foot. And she said she still has a little bit of pain right now, but it's because her wound was so deep, almost, I believe, probably down to almost the bone of her toe or second toe. So it was such a deep wound. And now she, you know, the tip of her toe isn't round anymore. It's a little flat, but that's, we'll live with that because we have all of her toes. And I'm not saying that she's not going to have to have something done in the future, with but the other leg. with the other leg, but we're, Dr. Runback explained it to us. Also, he told me, he said, Eric, he said, your mom's doing well. He said, there's no pain. She doesn't have any sores. He says, we don't operate if there's a leg, you know, we don't die from a leg attack. We die from a heart attack. That's why they do interventional with cardiology and this situation. He says, as long as she's fine, and I can remember last Wednesday when we, we left there and we walked out into the car and I'd said walked out into the car. And when I took my mom there before, she was in a wheelchair and now she walked out. We walked out to the car, she got in the car, she sat in the back of the car and she was crying. And I said, mom, why are you crying? She said, Eric, she looked at me and said, Eric, I don't have to have anything done, she said. Dr. Runback and what, who Kim hooks people up look across the country, there is doctors, but it's such, it's such a dark space. Um, and when I text Jim that day of my mom's procedure, um, he said, I'm so glad, glad you connected with Kim and Dr. Runback is excellent. One of the clear leaders in efforts to prevent amputation. And I very much trust him and his skills. I wish you and your mom the best of luck and please let me know how it turns out. This was on the 16th. 
this would have been the day before my mom's procedure. I left him a message just thanking him. I said, you know, I went back and I just, I told Jim, I said, I, I said, you opened the door for me and my mother to find a solution to her pain. I can't thank you a lot enough. Dr. Or, uh, Jim Wilson replied back to me. He said, my pleasure. And thanks for being so persistent with your mother's care. It's harder to find really skilled physicians in this space than it should be. There's even a bill in Congress called the ARC Act to address this issue from Congressman Payne of New Jersey. I can't say enough good about Dr. Runback and the group there. Everybody was great. Everybody helped us out to, you know, and stayed late. And, you know, I know we were the last patient of the day. It was a very long day. We were there early and we left late. But I can't say enough for all of them there that helped us. Um, I, you know, I, I wish there's more that I could do for Dr. Runback. Um, great, great guy, very approachable, very down to earth. I mean, just like a regular guy, but a very gifted man. And I asked Diane, I said, is this, she says, oh no, he operates here at this hospital. He does this, he does that. Um, and there is doctors out there in the space, but I think it should be just more enlightened so people could find them more. We're glad that he's there and we're glad with our outcome of, of the whole procedure. In a nutshell, I, I just wanna thank everybody at NJ Endovascular, Dr. Runback, Kim McNichols, Kay, all the staff there, everybody's been been great. And I and I and I I can feel people that when they go to a, a clinic like that, that sometimes you feel like, what am I, you know, what am I doing? What am, am I in the right place? And I felt that all the way until I met Dr. Runback. And when he came out and he told me, hey, like, no big deal. He goes, I I, I fixed your mom. And it was just like the greatest day ever. Um, and like I said, it's all a lot, lot of answered prayer, a lot of people praying, a lot of tons of prayer, and it only would have lined up like that if, it, you know, God opened the door through that Jim Wilson and through all the people there um, to get us, to get us there and to get us repaired, to get her repaired. Mm -hmm.